So when you consider Homo economicus, we know Homo economicus is rational and is going to maximize their utility. You come to that. But we also know that if, if you want things and your resources are unlimited, maximization just means buying more and more and more of everything. I want more clothes, I want more jewelry, I want more food, I want a second house, I want a third car, right? So wanting things is not enough. I need some theory about how you make this decision in terms of your available options. So you're maximizing your utility, your desire, in relation to the options available to you. So the concept here is actually very similar to what we did with the production possibilities frontier, where we were looking at the options available to an economy. In terms of households, we're looking at options available to them to buy goods and services. And so for the households, that equivalent of how do I show your options, the way in which I did for the PPF, is based on your income and the prices of the goods you want to buy. So let's keep this like very simple. Let's say you have a choice between rice and transport. And let's say that per pound, Rice was two pound, two dollars a pound. These all made up numbers. I haven't checked them. And transport was four per kilometer. Actually, I'm for the U.S. people who are not used to working with kilometers and the global uh, sort of system dollars four per miles. Right? Oh. So two per pound, four per mile. And you earn based on what you're doing in input markets. So this is going to be an interesting question about how much this will end up being depending on your decisions in relation to the labor market and other markets. Well, let's say you earn thousand dollars. So if if you look at this, if you took your thousand dollars, I'm going to use Y for income because in macro I ended up using I for investment so <laughs> need a different uh, symbol. So if I'm earning a thousand dollars, the maximum rice I can get at two dollars per pound is five hundred. But that means I can't get any transport. Conversely, if I put all my income in transport, The best I can do with an income of thousand is two fifty. And so those are my options. I don't spend all my money, which means I can end up here. And usually most people don't spend up their income. We're going to find out that we often treat savings as a form of uh, uh, one more expenditure that you spent. If you don't spend the money you, on this, you spent it on stocks and bonds or checking accounts or whatever. Right? But essentially, you can get access to anything here or on that curve. So this is very similar, and basically this is your budget 
constraint. And quite simply, the constraint is given by the straight line. Price of good one times the amount of good one you buy plus price of good two times amount of good two you buy equals to your total income. So it's a straight equation. This is your budget constraint. P1 times Q1 plus P2 times Q2 equal to Y. So the first thing we know is that whatever decision you make, it has to lie inside this budget constraint. It can be here, it can be here, it can be here, right? It can be anywhere, but it, it can't be past the budget constraint. So the first thing we're beginning to map out in our decision making by consumers is what is the basket of goods the consumers can actually buy given their income, their budget constraint. This then is their available options. And then the theory of the consumer is out of your available options. As a rational consumer, you will choose the option, whether it's more rice and less transport or whether it's more transport and less rice, you will choose the option that maximizes your own utility. So rational choice is maximize utility subject to budget constraint. We've learned about the budget constraint. The next piece we're going to add in is how you maximize utility.